what I think I want to do to uh, begin the day is have a little review. And also, I might even start out with some, some questions, but I do want to have a review. And then after review, I will uh, ha take some questions and just some comments about how you are uh, progressing through this activity this month. Is everybody uh, doing okay regarding themselves uh, personally and just making it through this still very unique time we know as uh, year 2020? Uh, Lori, Ed, Latanya, Claudette, you all doing okay? All right, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things are going well here. Okay, Billy. Yeah, you are. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're still yeah good. we're fine. Things are things are uh, not the normal that I remember. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you don't remember because they ain't coming back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe that to be true. So true, Bruce. <laughs> this is uh, to be true. This is the way things are going to be, and um, we we have to count it all joy. Uh, James, sure. uh, two. Uh, chapter uh, James chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 says that uh, count it all joy because when we are challenged that builds up our perseverance our persistence so whatever comes out of this experience will definitely be stronger for the effort and what it is or what it isn't is determined by what you choose it to be so if you choose this as a building period, as a period of uh, making the right adjustments so that you can uh, only benefit, then you will be seeing things rightly from your perspective. And that's the only perspective that counts. Um, other people's opinions should have no bearing over you, be it done unto you as you believe. So if you believe everything is good and very good and you work uh, with faith, your words and your faith and your work will not return unto you void. So it is all good because it's all God. So we will um, begin our review here. Let me uh, see if I could bring a few things to the screen. What do we have? we have here well, let me do something before I do that get over here and, uh, what's going on mm -hmm. Just waiting for my document to come up here. Looks like it's trying to come. A bit slowly. All right, all right, all right. Let's get over here and do this here. Okay, so we're going to start off with a, a real quick review here. Um, this is our first uh, Tech Tuesday effort, and uh, we thank everyone who has taken the time to uh, jump on these calls every Tuesday morning. Uh, the goal is to really help us uh, use technology in a way that could uh, be to our advantage. Uh, and it's all about what your business primary focus is, what your business uh, strategy and objectives are. And so everybody uses tech a little different. You don't have to copy 
and do much what you think other people are doing. You have to do what works for you. And that all kind of begins, as we described um, on the first Tuesday, uh, you know, you need, a, you need, just like you have a business plan, you need a tech plan. Uh, you need a game plan. You need, you need some kind of focus and there should be parallels. Hopefully um, we all have some 30, 60, 90 day goals. They're also better if they're written down so that we can refer to them and kind of keep pace on how we're doing and keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, you know, a business goal should be, you know, how many customers do I want to acquire? Uh, what kind of uh, additions do I want to make to my product or service offering? Uh, how do I want to position myself to solve those problems that my customers have let me know is the main thing that they're concerned about right now? Uh, so those primary objectives that are business objectives then should correlate to uh, how, how can technology help me do that? If my customers expect to order online, if they expect me to be able to provide customer service, uh, just so the fact that customers know uh, what I'm doing, uh, when I'm open, when I'm operating, how to get in touch with me, giving them multiple ways of getting in touch with me, uh, not just by phone, but maybe by text message or even social media message, all of these things should correlate to a business objective. So that's called syncing up your business plan to create your tech plan. It's not driven by technology, it's driven by business. What is it that your business outcomes are? And we talked about SMART goals and I think we shared some SMART goal sheets. And that's just a way of breaking down goals into bite-sized chunks, but doing it in a way where it is specific, it's measurable, uh, you can know what you need to do, what resources are required, and, and when to, and time bound, when, when is it going to be delivered? So hopefully all of us know what SMART goals are. And one thing I, I was thinking about in preparing this course for today is all of us have lived in this time of Google. You know, there's nothing that cannot be Google. There's nothing, uh, but you know, many of these other platforms are also search engines. You know, uh, YouTube is a search engine. Um, uh, LinkedIn is a search engine. You could type into, uh, you know, the search box on any of those platforms and see what comes up that also gives you information about your industry, your competitors, uh, know, more, uh, know more about some of the people you're trying to make as customers. If you're trying to sell to uh, the city of Chicago, Chicago Public Schools, Cook County, well, you could go Start by like everybody else does. Look, look, look at Cook County's webpage. Look at, uh, you know, their YouTube channel. See what the commissioners are talking about, and and do your research. So you know, Google has been a godsend to small businesses, uh, but again, also Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of those things are points of searching. So you could go to Twitter, type in a, a, a name or. A, of some activity and see what comes up. But particularly YouTube is where you can learn anything. YouTube is like, you know, global, international, free university. Uh, you, you, you can learn almost any subject. And so many companies have uh, tremendous videos that they've uh, done about their product, how to use Zoom, how to use Google Apps, how to use Google Meet. And so really, Whenever you have a question about something, uh, you want to learn something new, SMART goals. You, you can go, go to put SMART goals in YouTube, and I'm sure uh, a bunch of different workshops will come up that will explain what SMART goals are, how to use them, best practices, how it relates to different industries like real estate or construction. So it's really pretty amazing these, the amount of resources that are out there uh, that you can access. Um, and then you have to, as a business person, recognize that you can't do everything. You know, uh, the object really in business is not to become an expert in every different thing. It's really to understand what you want to do and, and then how to go about doing it. And then, if necessary, um, engage somebody, uh, either directly or indirectly, that could help you in this area. And, and ultimately, as a business, it really helps 
when you start to grow and you can um, uh, distribute the work and every, you know, you don't work yourself into a tizzy, you offload some of this. And uh, especially, again, what I hope we can do in the context of um, uh, the context of uh, Sunshine is, is, is begin to learn more about each other's businesses, what we're expert in, uh, who kind of does what, and maybe, you know, do some sharing, bartering, uh, that kind of thing to get, you know, a pro in one area to come by and help you uh, in the area that you have. So that was uh, week number one. Let's uh, now, again, one of the things, if you know, well, you maybe not recognize this, but this, this, this document exists in uh, Google. So this is a, uh, we're looking at a Google Doc, and this is a part of the G Suite. So I'm gonna uh, go back to uh, my Google Docs uh, page. And uh, so when you open up, uh, you look over here and you see, uh, does everybody see that box showing all the Google apps on the side, on the right hand side? Yes. Okay, so all this is free stuff that comes along with your Gmail account. Uh, uh, calendar, Gmail, search, YouTube, maps, finance, uh, play, drive, voice, docs. And so we're just looking at Google Docs. And when you bring up Google Docs, these are some templates that exist. So when you start certain things, you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, you can take a look at a template and modify it. And then these are some uh, thumbnails of previous. So we were looking at uh, Sunshine number one. Let's look at Sunshine number two. So I click on that and open it up. So in, um, in week number two, last week, we took a look at uh, the Grow with Google platform. Uh, we talked about get your business online for free. Um, and then these were some of the links uh, that we all should provide it. Now, has anybody in this past week had a chance to uh, take a look and is it anybody here register for Google My Business? I, I signed up for Primer. No. Okay, Primer, that's good. And, and so Primer is down here and that uh, Primer is an app that you can download to your phone and go through various uh, courses uh, to help you on any particular uh, activity with your business that you're working on, like branding. We're going to talk about branding today. So Google Primer is a free app that you can download. And when you downloaded it, did you download it to an Android or iPhone? Android. Okay, so it works on both platforms. Um, uh, how many of you, uh, is, is everybody on the call today a member of the a Facebook group for the uh, Sunshine alumni? Yes. Okay, that's good because I put all of these links on that Sunshine alumni page and um, that's a place where we can share with each other uh, what's going on with our business. It's a good way to get started in social media. We're gonna talk about that today. So again, uh, to get started, you know, you can go, you can, uh, go to this first link, uh, google.com slash business, uh, and it'll bring up uh, exactly how you can uh, get started with uh, getting online with Google. And you can do as we saw last week, where we had a great example of one of our businesses uh, went through that process to uh, set up their business uh, with a map, and then ultimately have more information that linked to other sources. So all of that is free and you can't be free in this time uh, of things that we're going through. So this is a great way to get started with getting connected. And like I said, um, you, you'd be surprised on YouTube how many companies have their own YouTube channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Zoom. So companies use um, YouTube and even small companies. We'll show you some small companies today that are using YouTube
to have a channel of content that helps people understand what's going on with your business. And this is really wonderful for small businesses because you can really do uh, videos that help people understand uh, who you are, what your business does, how they benefit. Uh, and you'd be surprised that, that people take advantage to learn more about what you're doing. So we're gonna uh, go back and then um, we're gonna look at our outline for uh, today. Okay, so this is um, our activity today. We're gonna talk just a little bit about uh, branding uh, because social media is a vehicle for marketing. And marketing is, is synonymous with branding. And branding is synonymous with successful companies. When you think of successful companies, you know, you can't think of a successful company that is not a successful brand. Uh, the goal of, of, of marketing is to become a brand name and to have that brand name mean something to the audiences uh, that they're trying to reach. And then once that brand uh, has the respect, the trust, the confidence, uh, there's a lot that comes after that. So uh, branding is central to using any kind of media radio, television, uh, direct mail, uh, you know, people are inundated with messages today. So how does your message uh, stick out? It's all based on your brand. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the map part because we covered that, but it's relevant and we'll skip through that. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about how does this translate to your website and then setting up uh, social media pages. So that's what we're gonna uh, talk about here today. So like I said, I think we're gonna start out talking about uh, branding. And uh, I think I've got a brand document here, uh, right here. Okay, everybody see this uh, uh, branding cheat sheet? Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna send this to uh, everybody, so again, uh, I'm just going to go through this really kind of quickly, but everybody's going to get a copy of this, uh, and you will be able to um, uh, have this yourself, so you don't have to worry about, about taking notes. But this is just kind of a refresher of some of the basic things that's important about branding. Um, um, you know, brand is much more than just a, a logo. Uh, it's really what your primary desire is for how you want people to understand yourself, your business, the value that you bring to the process. And so, you know, the best concept is to uh, incorporate the name, the message, the target audience. And when you think about good brands, you know, some people are very lucky or not lucky, but they're just very smart how things fall together uh, and, and the brand name, the look, all of the stuff all works for that person. So how, how do people be able to do that? Well, here's some easy ways to get to that point where you kind of have a good brand concept. Uh, the first step is determine what you are branding. And just for the sake of, um, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll leave this like this for now, but so determine what your branding and whether your brand will be your one and only or one of several brands within your organization. So, you know, your the point is there there is a brand that is the company and then there are brands that are product lines. If you think about Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is the overall company brand, but then they have vitamin water, they have a bunch of subsidiary brands that fall under the Coke name. But so you have to make a decision. Most of us are at the point of just having uh, the single brand that folk is our business to, that we're launching. Uh, then you, you want to really research. Uh, and this is where Google comes in. You want to really get a good idea. Who is my market? You know, who, who's, who do people perceive as the leader in the space that I'm in? You know, who's my competition? you know, what kind of messaging are they using? 
you know, try to research and compile as much uh, knowledge as you can about what's going on in the space that you've decided to be in. Now, a key aspect of branding is what we call brand positioning. And that's no nothing more than really saying, here's what I'm bringing to the table. Here's what makes me unique. Here's my uh, special offer. Sometimes I refer to it as, what's your X factor? You know, when you add it all up, what's that X factor that gives you a particular uh, unique uh, advantage that compared to the other folks that are doing something, maybe it's, you know, you know your neighborhood better than anybody else because you've lived, grown up, shopped, drove, drove down every street in that neighborhood. You know that neighborhood like the back of your hand. You know, that's your, that, that could be your brand position. You know, I know Inglewood. I know Woodlawn. I am Woodlawn. I am Bronzeville. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a part of this community. And if you can say that and back it up and mean it, that's a very strong position. They may say, hey, I, you know, that, that means something, at least to the people in that area. So, but, but what makes you unique? Then define your brand by stating what it stands for. Sometimes you hear people say, what is your why? You know, you know it, 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 if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So you have to have, you know, um, there, there was a time when uh, Federal Express, as a new company, was coming into the marketplace. And one of the things that allowed them to fundamentally get a toehold in the marketplace was they came up with a brand statement that said absolutely positively overnight. And that was something that when people were sending documents or packages, nobody had ever heard of guaranteed overnight delivery. Now it's become commonplace, but you know, their, their, their statement was, we stand for delivery, confirmation of delivery, knowing that if you have something that's really important, it's got to get there, you want to send it FedEx because it's going to get there. So what is your statement? What are you standing on that is your uh, brand uh, message? Uh, and and who, do, who, who needs to hear that message? Everybody doesn't need to respond to a message. If you're all about uh, uh, women as a marketplace or uh, people in school as a marketplace or seniors as a marketplace, then you just have to make sure that your brand message is reaching the people you want to reach, saying the right things that, that they want to respond to. Manage your brand by understanding and leveraging your brand's value. And then the point of me going through this is by getting all of these concepts and messaging and value propositions out front, then this will drive how you use social media, you know, because you'll be consistent in how you use your messaging, your statements, your logo. You want to play that across the different methods that you use. And then, of course, you got to monitor, evaluate, and update. You can't just decide that, um, you know, if, if something's working or not working. Now, if it's working, stick with it. But you pay attention to when do people, you know, how many, if I send out email, how many people open my email? Uh, when do they open it? Um, uh, how much time do they spend looking at uh, something on my Facebook page? Do they click through? You know, it's one thing to post a lot of information on, but how much engagement do you get? So there are a lot of ways you could check uh, and start to monitor what you're actually doing. Um, but again, I'm going to send this out. I'm not going to spend any more time on this, but, uh, but this is just a good kind of review of just thinking in your own mind. You know, what is my promise? Uh, does it reflect my core beliefs? Uh, consistency is really very important. And if you say what you stand for and you mean it and you repeat that over and over and over again, ultimately people start to believe it. Now it's got to be backed up with the ability to deliver. If FedEx said, you know, absolutely positively overnight and they had a 50% success rate, you know, people would have thrown them by the side of the road. But if you can actually deliver on what you're saying you deliver on, you know, we, we reply in four hours or less, you know, we'll get you, uh, you know, a, a response back to your inquiry. So it's very critical to have something you stand for and really mean that. So that's enough about that. Um, I'm going to send this off to you. You can review it. Uh, so there's something to consider. But we're going to uh, jump right in and take a look at how this uh, is exemplified in some 
um, and, and using the tools that we have available uh, today. So let me stop this share and I'm gonna bring up some new stuff. So but I said before we jumped into that, I wanted to have some questions. Um, anybody have any questions uh, or comments about our previous week's activity or, or any thoughts you have, uh, challenges you have around branding, marketing, or using technology to help you in that area. Any questions or stuff people particularly would like to put on the table today? Hello, my, my, my name is Sandra Davis. I know yes. how my company, I want my company to be positioned right now, but then I have like longer term goals. Mm -hmm. I know how I want my company ultimate, ultimately to be. So it's always a, juggling right now versus what I want in the future. H how do you do that with your brand? Uh, that's an excellent question. And it, it really, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a brand having an aspiration, meaning a long-term vision. So if you aspire to be, let's say the number one brand in uh, women's cosmetics, um, we, or we want to, I want to be the go-to choice for, you know, whatever you are. There's nothing wrong with saying that and, and putting that out there as a big goal. In fact, it, it's, it's, it's less about the product and more about the aspiration, you know, how, you know, making lives better, you know, one sister at a time, you know, so that, that is something that gives you a big window to fit through. Uh, and so you have an aspiration now. So some people describe this as you have a, um, a, a tagline and a vision statement. So the vision statement might be that bigger idea, that longer term goal, that tagline is saying how I'm gonna get there. So if I, if the vision statement is, you know, I wanna be, you know, uh, the number one, black beauty brand on the planet you know if that's the vision statement then the tagline might be you know making women's lives better one face at a time or you know one you know so something breaking it down but stepping it through and then that's what we said earlier about having a primary brand and then individual brands so but there's got to be consistency so like if we look at you know, the Coke example, you know, Coke is a very diversified company, but largely it's all beverages. So it all plays on the strength of refreshment, consumption, bottling, packaging, distribution. And so they have, uh, you know, they have uh, d uh, waters, you know, Dasani water, vitamin water, uh, you know, energy drinks. And so they're, they're, they've got a whole umbrella of products, but it's all in the same, uh, uh, you know, if you think back in the day, they used to say things go better with Coke. They set it up as an as a overarching theme for the brand, but they were able to fit a lot. But so they, the consistency is what they rolled out under the umbrella of the major brand. Does that help a little bit? Definitely. Um, so your tagline is your brand promise and your vision statement is the longer term goal. Correct. Thank Absolutely. You so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. So you said the tagline. It's basically, is it a promise or is it um Well it is because it's, 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 it's like if it's a promise then there's something that is expected and if they really don't get that then what? Well, I mean again, you <laughs> promises promises in business are made to be delivered. Yeah, and also, right. it, it, what you're ultimately building is trust from the standpoint of creating a relationship. One of the biggest okay. things you want to do in business is you want to identify customers, acquire customers, importantly, retain customers. If, if you can keep customers in your umbrella, that's what brands are all about. In fact, if you look at, you know, Black consumers in particular, black consumers are particularly brand loyal. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You said black, I'm sorry, black who? Black consumers 
are brand loyal. And, and I'm talking about you. Yeah. Forget consumer, I'm talking about you. Yeah. When, when you find a product that you have confidence in, how likely are you just to try something different? Exactly. You're right. right. You know, if you go to Nordstrom's and Nordstrom's gives you good service, you're not going to 50 different places, just see what they have. You say, hey, I got my person in Nordstrom. They take care of me. You know, when I want to take something back, I don't have no hassle. You know, I got a, Nor I got a Nordstrom's credit card. They give me some little brownie points every now and then. Hey, I'm cool, you know. So my first choice is going to be the brand that I feel comfortable with. And so that's really, but you, you only get there because you've performed. You know, you only get there because there's been positive communication and earned trust. So those are the things that you are working towards. Uh, and I'm so glad we're having this conversation because now you say, well, what I do with, how is what I'm doing on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, communicating my vision, my, my message, and it's really a contract. You know, it's a contract and, and that contract gets executed uh, every time somebody engages your, your, your brand. So you want to okay. think about it, you know, that, that's right. I don't want to make promises I can't deliver on. Right, exactly. But the tagline is basically a promise statement. Yes, it, it could be a promise statement or, you know, but, but you know, th think, think, really think of it is if I'm sitting down having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with um, a, a prospect or a customer, what is it, what, what do I, when they walk away from that conversation, what do I want them to know? How do I, and here's the very important thing, not just what do I want them to think, but what do I want them to feel? Because feelings are what people move on. You know, they can think a lot of things, but when they feel something, when they feel that somebody has their best interest, when they feel that you heard them, when they feel like you'll be there when they need them, then that's why brands have so much credibility because people feel like in the long run, they're gonna be around, you know? And so whatever that message is, is going to be a good message uh, for, uh, uh, for, for delivering on the promise and the contract has been stated. So let's take uh, a, a quick look. Uh, so one of the keys in branding is like, is consistency. So when you, when you have a brand, in, in fact, I'm gonna, um, just as an example, I'll, I'll take a look here quickly at, uh, you know, I, I think for a nonprofit, Sunshine has done a pretty good job of their branding activity. So I'm gonna take a look at a few things and, and we're gonna look at some brand elements. And let me bring this up real quick. Okay, no, let me go back there. Okay. Okay, so um, everybody see the, uh, I'm at Google search for Sunshine Enterprises. Everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So um, name of the organization is obviously Sunshine Enterprises. Their URL is sunshineenterprises.com. Um, now, Interesting is you see where the first search came up and it says ad. That means that that was, that was, they purchased that. Now, even though when you do Sunshine, now this was based on a Sunshine Enterprise search and then Sunshine Enterprises came up and if, and then these are some of the things that are part of their website, a mission statement, programs, contact us, uh, CBA, 
which what all of you all went through stories hiring uh, and then you see their Facebook page uh, also came up the Facebook page is also sunshine enterprises here's a Twitter account sunshine enterprises so here's a link then sunshine enterprises and then even eventbrite sunshine enterprises so you know they it's, it's consistency they don't they're not using a lot of different names they're using sunshine enterprises and then when we look over here as we discussed last week this is uh, a free thing that everybody can set up and it's, it's through google my business so when you want to set up this you just go to uh, Google My Business, you start the process, and it'll allow to set up this uh, Google Maps section. And all this is free here. You could have uh, pictures, if we see photos. Again, and this is one thing, uh, if I didn't mention this last week, you know, today's marketing is really all around images and video. The more images and video you have, you know, you'll always, so this, you see, these are old. You know, we see this is when some of the activity was on, you know, the other side of the street. Wait a minute. I thought that was Claudette. I thought that might have been you. That might be somebody else. Okay, but, you know, somebody's able to see what's going on with your business. And this is not from a website. This is right here. Now, they also have, there's a button here that links to your website. There's a button here that links to map and directions. You can save that so it becomes a favorite place on a map that's your personal map. Okay, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the Facebook page. Okay, now on the Facebook page, we see that they happen to put a video. Just as we said, video is getting very popular. Uh, now this is a free. So this is a free uh, Facebook business page. This isn't a personal page. This is a business page. And you see it's called Sunshine Enterprises Consistent. Uh, and so you're able to, you know, here, here's a, a CBA in action. Here's some posts from a CBA. So this is really, you know, again, you're seeing a little commercial. And everybody has a chance to do this, setting up a Facebook business page. Uh, you see that there's some posts here and images, but the, you know, and they also, here you see a button here that says visit group. So I'm gonna click that group page and see where that goes. Okay, and then this is the page that we're all a member of. So what this is is, a way of building community around your business activity that you have. Now, what's, what's the brand color for Sunshine? Gold or yellow. Uh, number two, guess orange. number two. <laughs> orange. <laughs> orange. All right, orange, right. How do, how do we know? <laughs> You know, because it's everywhere. Because it's everywhere. So again, if if you have a brand and you have a color, you know, just what what's what's Coke's brand color? Red. What's McDonald's Blue. brand color? Yellow. 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 All right. Red and yellow. Yeah. That's right. So brand. If you have a brand color, stick to that brand color. Use that brand color all the time, and and it it, it just lets people know, you know, they are where they thought they were going. You know, they, they look at it, you know, this is the sunshine little logo. That's just logo there. But again, the, 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 the sunshine and every, everything is consistent with that uh, logo. So we're, we're looking at, we're looking at uh, a, a, gener a basic free Google page. We're looking at a, another thing that's free, which is a group, which is again, if you, if you, get to the point with your organization that you want to build a community like you could have a, a VIP club for your favorite customers and they could be an invitation only like here it says this group is a private group so the only way you become a member of the Sunshine alumni is you have to 
go through the programs, be invited, and then somebody administers the page so that you uh, can use it. Um, just as an example, I'll give, this is a group that I started. It's called an Entrepreneur Success Program. Uh, got 2,163 members. Uh, anything that's posted on this page, I have to approve. Anybody that's admitted to the group, I have to approve them admitting. But once they're admitting, uh, they can post information or I can post information about things that they're doing. And the whole purpose of this group is to network and share information amongst entrepreneurs. So this is entrepreneurs just sharing information about what they're doing all around the country, but mostly here in Chicago. And if they've got an event, they can post it in an event. Now, you know, chances are their own network, plus this, this network expands what it is to do. But now, um, how many, some of you all know uh, Andrea Drain? She was, didn't, I think she spoke at a graduating class of a CBA maybe last year. Anyway. That is correct. Okay, but my, my point I'm making is what's happening today is in, in back in the day, a lot of street marketing was done by small business with pluggers, with flyers. People would go to the print shop, print up a plugger, a thousand, two thousand, then go around, you know, try to pass them out everywhere. This is the plugger of today. It still has to be laid out. You know, but the point is, once you get your digital layout, you can distribute it. And then you could, you know, you could have pass along distribute. So you can do way more digital distributing than you ever could do passing out pluggers one to one. So because Andrea is a friend of mine, you know, I posted what she's got coming up this week on this page so more people could see it. So you got friends out there that'll help you, but you, Again, what it is, it has a good photography. You know, there's, good photography is all difference in the world. Then maybe this layout, you know, maybe she had a graphic designer or somebody do these layouts, but there are a lot of tools today. In fact, I'll round some of these tools up and send it out to you, but there are a lot of tools that are available on your phone. A lot of them started because of Instagram. Uh, they, uh, you know, people can do these kinds of flyers. So the point is, you still want your brand image to look good. You want to have your logo, Eden 360. You want to make sure you could read it. But, you you know, and then you see she has her website listed here. And uh, this is all coming from her, you know, personal page. But this is, we're looking at different, you know, this is a Facebook group page. And groups are free, but now to do all of this, you do need to have a personal page. But what I would recommend is if you have a personal page, uh, this is my personal page. Once you become an entrepreneur, you probably want to start being consistent in how you uh, communicate uh, around certain things and and you kind of stick to what you're about so if you're about business if you're about food if you're about fashion you know then make your post not only on your business page but you know consistent with what it is you're doing now we talk about consistency and i'm going to use uh another example here um Bruce, real quick, I, I stand corrected. Andrea Thompson is who spoke at the graduation. I don't know about Andrea. I, I think that's okay. I think Those that's are... the same person. Okay. Uh, I, I think it is, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. So this is a um, a friend of mine. Uh, uh, opened up a new coffee shop in Chicago. Actually, it opened up just before COVID happened. And then, of course, it had to close. And so it's been closed for uh, a few months. And then, fortunately, 
they were allowed to open back up doing social distancing. So this is a, a coffee shop uh, uh, that just opened up. And I, I want to use this just an example. So this is um, a, a business Facebook page. So they've got their logo up here. And they've got a picture of their uh, you know, storefront right here. Uh, people can come along and like the page. Uh, then if you go down, you see that uh, they, they're they doing some pictures of uh, products that they offer as a coffee shop. They have a little breakfast sandwich. They, um, they show some specials and things that they have. There are the founders, uh, uh, Tracy and his wife that opened up the business. Uh, they got a little video here telling their story. If I click that, it'll play a little video background of, you know, what how they came up with the idea and what they're doing. Uh, another picture, of Tracy. Another picture of the outside. So since the time that they've been open, which is just a few months, they've got about 800 or so people that have uh, found and supported the page. Uh, they've got their phone number and hours of operation. You got a picture where you can find them on the map. And then you see a button here that says you want to learn more. Uh, but the, the, what I wanted to do with this, I know I'm short on time. What I wanted to show is every business should have a Facebook business page. Uh, this is the easiest way that, you know, you don't have to know any programming. You don't have to know anything about web design or any of that. You know, you can lay this out very easily. And I'm, I'm gonna quick, I'm gonna jump to a few things here because I know I'm short on time, but I just wanted to show uh, a couple of ways that this plays out. So this is a page that I set up for a, um, a, a YouTube channel. So what I, the name of my uh, YouTube channel is consistent with uh, an activity that I have called Tech Access TV. And so we, you see, I've got a name, I've got a little logo, I've got a picture, and then I've got some of the videos associated with that channel. Um, here's an Instagram page for Tech Access TV. So all of, all of these properties are all uh, using, so if you go, if you go to youtube.com slash Tech Access TV, this is what comes up. If you go to Instagram slash Tech Access TV, this is what comes up. If you go to Facebook slash Facebook.com slash Tech Access TV, this is what comes up. If you have any more. Okay, no, I don't have any more. So I, I think I had a, a Twitter. Let's do, um, let's come down here and do a Twitter one. So the point is, is you wanna be consistent with your name across all of these platforms. So when people are looking for you, um, they can uh, consistently find you and, and having the same name across these different uh, platforms will also help your searchability. So when people search you on Google, they'll see multiple instances of your brand name so again you know part of the conversation we had was about branding so if you see still waiting for that to come up you see momentum coffee you see that little little power on button there that is uh you know so they've got this consistent look shows up not you know in real life it also shows up you know in digital i don't know why twitter is taking so long to come up but i'll i'll stop that um, so the point is too, that these things are free. So a Facebook business page is free. Um, uh, getting to, you know, having this and anybody can set this up for your business and start posting information about what's going on with your product or service. As we saw earlier, you could, uh, set up, uh, videos, uh, Instagram, again, visual orientation, but it's free to set up, free to, you know, name it. When I first set this up, I actually set it up for myself personally, but then I decided to be consistent and switch it over so that it's all cons consistent with my uh, TV piece. 
So last thing I'm going to say in the few minutes I have left, I want to talk about also getting started with the website. And <clears throat> again, I don't, you know, I, 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 my suggestion for most small businesses is if you're just trying to get started, a good way to get started is with the free tools like uh, Google My Business, getting that map section set up, uh, getting some pictures out there because you can't really have a website without content. You need, what are you gonna say? What's the message you wanna have? What's the, uh, you know, what's the purpose of the website? Is the purpose of the website to identify new customers, to be able to do bids and estimates for people, to build a mailing list? And so how am I gonna be messaging in order to do that. But you can, act, again, as, as possible today, a lot of this stuff could be done for free. So my recommendation would be to start with those things that are easy to do. You can even do on your mobile phone. Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know, all that really easy to do. Then, then at, as you start creating some content, then move to creating a, a website. And one good way to get started with doing a website is with a platform called Wix. This is a free uh, service to get started. Um, it has a lot of templates. And one of the things you wanna do when you're you know, building up a website is you also wanna link that back to your social media. So what I would suggest if you're just thinking about a website, does anybody know, ha have ever used Wix or know anybody that has used Wix? I have it. You say you have it? I, yeah, I use Wix, but I, I don't use the free one. Uh, I do pay for it, but the only reason uh, I didn't like the free one is because I just didn't think it was as professional as I could be because it just has my name, LawnCareMaven.com versus LawnCareMaven.com slash Wix or something like that. Yeah, but that, it is that's a great a, place to start. That's right. That's a very good point. So what what she was mentioning is your domain name, you know, your company name.com. You want to appear to have, you know, so you can get a, a domain name. You, you can start with Wix before you get a domain name. But like, like she said, once you get to the point of you wanting to have uh, sunshineenterprises.com, uh, uh, whatever your .com name is, you want, a, um, a, you want a domain name. And so again, you, you can have a basic Wix website for free without having a, uh, a domain name. And then there's also a service that is part of Google that also allows, is, allows you to get a domain name. Now it's a good idea you can actually purchase your domain name prior to you building out your website. So, um, that's what I did. Right. So you I got that, my that's domain a, from Google, and then I went over to Wix and built the uh, the site. Okay. So I'm searching on a website, just Bruce. And here it says that somebody's got justbruce.com, but justbruce.org is available. So I'm just doing this just to show you that this is how easy it is to search for a web name. And it's, uh, if I put just Bruce Chicago, so it says, oh, all right, you're cool. Justbrucechicago.com is available. So if I wanted to buy that domain, all I have to do is click right here and pay $12 a year, and I've locked up that name. Now, some people consider this um, you know, a poor man's copyright, but the point is, once that domain name is sold, it's sold. And if you keep paying for it, you own it. So it's a good idea when you're thinking about your brand. But like I said before, you like to be consistent uh, so that the name that you use for your website, the name that you use for your Facebook page, the name that you use for Twitter, you want to be the same activity. So Sunshine Enterprises is the same across all of those brands, and that works to build 
your brand identity, your brand logo, your brand promise, your brand color, your brand contract, all of that works. And if your name is, is a strong name, and this is why a lot of times people have companies and they have Montgomery and Company, Montgomery and Associates, Montgomery Enterprises, where well, you can call the business whatever you want to call it. But the brand can actually have a brand name that speaks to what it is you do. So if I'm, you know, uh, or, or the brand promise, you know, when you think about um, uh, Nike or, you, th you know, there, there's some Apple. No, you know, but a Apple doesn't say anything about computers. But Apple is a name that one billion people on the planet automatically know what it is. And it, it, Apple was designed in the, in the original effort to be easy, to be available for general people. When the first Apple came out, there was no such thing as a personal computer for people at home. So the demystification of the technology, what's more demystified than an Apple? You know, who, who don't know what an Apple is? So it achieved the purpose of being unintimidating, non-techy, everybody can get with it. And here are some, you know, however many years later, Apple is, is about to be the first uh, trillion dollar valuation company in the history of earth. So, you know, your brand can also have a message of, hey, I'm easy, you know, everybody know me, you know, and so it doesn't have to be specific about lawn care or catering or whatever. It can have another kind of message that um, uh, can, can resonate with the audience. So again, I know we're kind of short on time, but remember these things that we took a look at. Google Domains is a place you can go to search and find your domain, and it's real easy um, to, and e e even before you get a website, if you get a domain, you can also get uh, a Google uh, apps to go along with it so you can have your own personalized email like Bruce at justbrucechicago.com. So um, these are so, so go take a look at Google domains. If you're thinking about the website, uh, you know, later on down the line, you could take a look at Wix, but, and, and these platforms have a lot of um, uh, instruction and, and templates to go along with it. So when you're working on a website, and you say, well, I don't know what my layout might be. They've got example layouts. And so you can start sketching out, hey, I like that layout, but I want to change it to have, uh, you know, a picture of my model in there. And I kind of like that background, but I'm doing something a little different. So these are ways that you can start uh, your website and really end up. But the one thing you see here is good photography matters good photography matters no matter what you're doing having good professional good look at pictures is going to make a huge difference whether it's a flyer a website a post on instagram and and it's not that good photography all has to be professional these uh you know most of us have if you bought a phone in the last four years uh, chances are you may have a phone that'll take a pretty decent picture. So it's just a matter of lighting and setting it up, making sure it's sharp and getting the most out of it. So um, that's about all we have time for today. Uh, I'm gonna send out uh, links to all of this uh, that we discussed today. I'm also gonna put these links on our uh, Facebook page. So be sure, uh, um, Quandra, are you gonna send out a survey for today? I am. I'll make sure I send it out. So I know there is a little confusion for people. So and it, I normally get the, well, this is where I get the, the mail out list comes from Eventbrite. So if you filled out an Eventbrite for say um, today's date, which is August 18th, then all those individuals who signed up for this um, service, I mean for this Tech Tuesday will get the um, handout. If you didn't sign up for eight 18 Tech Tuesday, send me your email and I'll make sure you're included in that survey list. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm 
I'm just, um, so this was, um, this was the, <clears throat> the Eventbrite where everybody should have signed up. So we've got one more coming up next week. Uh, everybody see the Tech Tuesday Eventbrite? Is that still showing? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so this was the uh, sign up page for Tech Tuesday. Uh, also, uh, this is another vehicle anybody could use for free uh, to have uh, an event, an activity, a product launch, a Zoom meeting. You know, it doesn't have to be going to a location just like today. People signed up for one of these. Uh, things and then was invited to a Zoom. So no reason you can't have a Zoom saying, hey, you know, I'm having a Tuesday after work mixer discussing, you know, my product or service, best practices and uh, what I do or talk behind the scenes and um, let people know what's going on. So Eventbrite is a very uh, slick way to get your brand message out there uh, to have some activity, to test the market, to see if people can be responsive. And then you can take your, uh, your Eventbrite information and you can put it on your, uh, you, you can record a video that you do on Zoom and then post it to your own YouTube channel. You can um, also, when you're getting ready to have an event, you can post your events on your Facebook business page. So just like here, you know, a person and a person could hit that link and go right to registering for a free activity. So a uh, lot of ways to integrate these things, but a good way to get started, easy way to get started is to set up, you know, uh, if you have a Facebook personal page to set up a Facebook group or Facebook business page, uh, I would start with a business page and um, go from there. So thanks everyone. I don't want to keep people too long. I know you got the business to take care of, customers to serve. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And you will get uh, a document with a lot of this information shared and, um, and uh, links to these will also be listed on our, uh, on our uh, Facebook page as well.